Hello everybody, this is Dr. Anna, your geology professor. Today we're going to talk about plate tectonics. This is one of my favorite chapter and uh, I want you to, to realize that this chapter, even though we're going to be over with it, you'll always have to know. There is no question, there is no excuse, you've got to know and I hope you're also going to understand it. We will play around it a lot, you know, and I will come back to it a whole lot. Plate tectonics is an amazing theory. Uh, we could say it's a revolutionary paradigm and it explains just about everything in geology. Um, it is a very brand new theory. It hasn't been in possibly just 50 years or so. I remember in high school when I learned about um, things, they didn't know about plate tectonics yet. But in, in, in college, when I got to college, that's when it kind of started to get together. Um, and it's really amazing because I learned about mountains before and they didn't know how the mountains get there and how did they form. They didn't really know how to look for geologic resources. Most of the time they just looked around and they either found some or they didn't. So since plate tectonics in and you know it's a it's a general idea based on which we actually can pinpoint geologic resources, it's really, really cool. Um, this this theory explained that the earth crust is composed uh, huge rigid plates and they are constantly in motion relative to each other and that's what we're gonna learn about. But the question is why would this plate exist and why would they move? And um, the really amazing explanation of this is is that if you if you remember we talked about the, the um, composition of the earth the big zones like the inner core, outer core, we just finished that so you sh it should be really still fresh in your brain. So the inner core, outer core, mental, um, then the asthenosphere, the upper, uppermost mental and then the crust. So the main thing that in the in the mantle because of the radioactive elements present, you know, remember the radio radioactive you don't remember yet you're gonna learn it in the minerals which is the next chapter so some of the elements are radioactive and when the elements are radioactive they decay into a different element and while they're decaying they, they're releasing a lot of energy this energy could be looked at as heat energy so therefore if you go through the the upper mantle of the earth you will see that there are places where the temperature is higher than other places. Now wherever the temperature is higher, and I will bring the example of cooking. I don't know how many of you have cooked before, but a lot of the times when you do cook uh, and you put your um, beaker on, on a, a Bunsen burner like in a chemistry lab, and you start warming it up from the middle, but you can see this even when you cook soup. You know, like the first bubbles, which you're going to see is going to be right in the middle of your pot. So the reason for that is that it heats up and as the temperature gets higher, what happens with the density? Yeah, the density is getting smaller, so the water is lighter, which makes it go which way? Yeah, you're right, it's going to go up. And that's why you see the particles of the water going up. And on the side where it's colder, it's going to go down. So it starts this current, convection current, which actually results in natural mixing in the soup. So the, the soup, your soup is always going to mix. So you don't really have to use the mixing spoon. It will mix by itself, but you can make it faster if you mix it. So you have to imagine the same thing is happening in the mantle. At the places where you have more radioactive element than others, so therefore more heat energy being produced, the material starts to move upward. When it reaches the earth crust, actually it breaks it up and the magma is going to come up, make volcanoes, and because of the magma in its room, actually it starts to push the things away from each other. So that's going to be the plate boundary where the plates are moving away. I want to show it to you. How do I show it? I come like this. They're moving away from each other. On the other hand, the other type of plate boundary, when the plates are moving toward each other, 
and when they get together one has to go under the other okay one is gonna go under the other and those are these are the colder areas but actually the the material is heavier more dense so it got to go down so wherever it's more hot it's gonna come up and wherever it's more cold it's gonna go down so those are going to be the convergent plate boundaries. The movement actually on the next slide, this movement is uh, when you play, it's obvious that on this slideshow right now you cannot see it, but when you play your own slideshow, you will be able to see the yellow represents the warmer temperatures and the blue represents the colder. You'll see this whole thing is moving and it shows you the so-called convection current, just like here. So this is the upwelling part of your convection current and this is the downwelling part of it. So this is a cool slide because you can see this um, current moving right here. So we have three kinds of plate boundaries. And above the upwelling part of this uh, current, we're going to have the so-called divergent plate boundary. And then whenever you have the downwelling part of the, the convection current, is going to be the convergent plate boundary. And then the third kind is the transfer plate boundary, where there is no moving up or down. The plates are just moving next to each other, just like that. Wait, I'm going to try this. So the, the plates are moving next to each other. I just have to move back a little, and then you can see it. Okay, so I just mentioned that the, the, the Earth has these rigid plates on top. And we have seven major ones, which uh, you should know the names, and I guess you already know it. Like this one here is the Pacific Plate, and then this is the North American Plate, the South American Plate. We have smaller, teeny tinier places, the Juan de Fuca Plate, the Cocos Plate, there is the Asian Plate, the Australian Plate, and so on. So, and in between these plates, we have the plate boundaries we're just going to talk about. So we're going to start with the divergent plate boundary. That's the first kind. When a divergence occurs within a continent, it's called, we call it continental rifting. So as the, the uh, warmer material is com coming up, it puts a big pressure right here, right here. And that big pressure actually break the crust up, break it up, and will make low volcanoes and a low... Um, valley will start forming and uh, this is the next step when you have the so-called rift valley now as the and and as soon as the rift valley forms the magma is coming up and this is starting to make oceanic crust right here oceanic crust so it's oceanic crust and then the magma is coming up and start to push this away as the magma goes in between so you can imagine more and more magma comes out and it's actually pushing these guys apart. One is going this way and the other one is going this way. And it's really amazing because we have evidence for this, you wouldn't believe it, but when they did check the magnetic um, direction along this mid-oceanic ridges and the ages of this group, it's youngest right here and oldest right there. So therefore, it's very logical. These plates are moving apart from each other. So it's really cool to know. When the rift valley, rift valley gets bigger, um, actually the seawater will be able to the seawater will be able to come in. So now you have a wider basin and volcanoes around it. So you're gonna have the magma coming up right here, right here, and this area is moving this way. This area is moving this way, and you're gonna have volcanoes all around this area. So that's how it goes. I have an amazing example right here, and you will have to know, I will ask questions, the place for divergent plate boundary, and you have to match the place name with the, with the divergent plate boundary, so I have a matching on the test about this. So here, this here is the Red Sea, Gulf of Aden, and the so-called East African Reef Basin. It's a typical so-called triple junction. As the magma is coming up from underneath, so here is the plate, the magma is coming up from underneath, 
most of the time the breakage is going to be like along the three arms they are usually 120 degree away from each other so right here it's a typical 100 degree three arms they have 120 degree usually in between so the interesting thing that usually only two of these arms are going to make it into ocean and the third one is going to be the failed arm and in this case you see the the red sea and the gulf of aden already have oceanic crust and the east african basins don't uh you know we do have as you know there is a whole lot of uh, lakes which are related to this rifting a bunch of volcanoes such as Mount Kilimanjaro and then you know so it's very very typical divergent plate but possibly when I do the matching I will do the Red Sea and that's going to be your divergent plate band. but I can also do the the Gulf of Aden or I could even say the the rift basins of East Africa And when the rifting sees and it becomes a so-called oceanic drift, oceanic drift. So uh, after the continental uh, rift, we have an oceanic drift. That just means that now you have a big ocean and uh, F. I couldn't put it there. So oceanic drift. When you have a big ocean, you have the mid-oceanic ridge in the middle. That's where the magma is coming up. It pushes the continents far, farther and farther away from each other. So now we, we have the wide ocean. And uh, wherever the continents are, there is nothing really happening there. Nothing. So we call those continent areas along the ocean passive margin. Passive. On both sides, of course, margin. I just say march. So this area here and this area here is part passive margins. Passive margin, sorry. Now, uh, there is one place in the world uh, where actually, oh, this here just shows you the amazing example of, of just this, the divergent plate boundary, the Atlantic Ocean. Look at the Atlantic Ocean. This here is the mid-oceanic ridge. And the Atlantic Ocean is absolutely perfectly symmetrical everywhere. Everywhere. Look. Both sides. So this is a typical mid-oceanic ridge, a beautiful ocean, and these are all passive margin. This area is passive margin, and this area is passive margin. So this is passive margin, and this is passive margin. So it's easy to remember. There is an interesting fact that the the place, I hope you know this place right here. What is this? Yes, you're right. It's Iceland. And Iceland is, is one place, the only place in the whole world where one of the mid-oceanic ridge made it into uh, actually an island. So when you walk on Iceland, you're actually walking on the mid-oceanic ridge, which is amazing. It really is amazing. That's why we have so many volcanoes in Iceland. And now we are at the convergent plate boundaries. The convergent plate boundaries will form above the downwelling part of the mid oceanic ridge. So uh, that's the area when, when the, when because of the density is larger because it's colder, so everything seems to move down. We have three cases, depending on what kind of plates are meeting here. When two oceanic plate meets, we call it oceanic oceanic plate boundary. And then you got the oceanic continental plate boundary, and finally, the continent continent plate boundary. So here we are, the oceanic oceanic plate boundary. Uh, when, when you have an ocean to meet an other ocean, oceanic plate, I should say. When I say oceanic plate, remember, oceanic lithosphere plate, it includes the uppermost mantle and the oceanic crust. So it's oceanic lithosphere plate, including the uppermost mantle plus the crust. 
So when I draw this and I say oceanic plate, it's important that you will do that too. And remember, everything here is underwater. Remember, what did we learn about the, the density of the oceanic plate? Yeah, it's 3.3 gram per cubic centimeter. And the other oceanic plate is the same. So when they being pushed together, they have the same density. One is going to be able to go underneath of the other. You see right there? Just mm -hmm. like that. And this is what I'm showing here. And as it gets deep enough, down, deep down enough, but the temperature is really warm, actually it will form magma. And because the magma is molten, it's much less dense, so it's going to come up just like that right here. You see it right here. And this magma is actually going to make it to the surface and will make a volcano. And this is all underwater except for the volcano. So it will make this teeny tiny island arcs or volcanic arc. And that's going to be the land right here. So we have the plate which is going down. The other one which is staying up. And you have this really deep part in the ocean is what we call trench, as it says right there. These are the deepest points in the ocean, like the very deepest point on Earth, the Mariano Trench, is along a type of plate boundary like that. You will see it in a minute because that's my example right there. So it's extremely important, you guys, that you put everything, what I have here, down. And I don't know if it's on this, but I can see it right now. This is what we call subduction zone. Subduction. Subduction. And Japan is the best example for this type of plate boundary. So if I did the matching question, then if I said oceanic, oceanic, you have to match it to Japan, okay? So it's easy to remember. And uh just make sure that I can ask this to draw. And if I do, that's going to be a four or five point question. So you really have to be, have to be able to reproduce this drawing. Okay, here is an example of this. That's a, if you want to draw this, that's fine. But you see the subducting plate, melting, making the volcanic island. Here is the trench and so on. Now, this is cool because here... You can see the real thing on a map flying over the ocean. So here we are the trench right there. These are the islands. And then the ocean behind. So here, when, when you have an oceanic, oceanic plate boundary, what you see on these maps, dark blue, which is deep ocean, the trench, islands, and then blue again. So remember, it's very important to, important to understand that in this case, this is the plate which is going under, and this is where the temperature reaches, and so here is the island. And then you have uh, ocean over it again. So that's the volcanic arch, and uh, the trench. The trench is right before it. So this is a perfect oceanic, oceanic plate boundary. Now, the second type is the so-called oceanic continental. This is the place where the oceanic plate is going and reaches the continent. And uh, the continental plate, remember, what is the what is the density of the continental plate? I guess I have to stop because uh, YouTube won't take any longer. So I'm going to stop and continue right from here.